What is up all you steelhead anglers out there? Thank you so much for tuning into another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today, we're gonna teach you everything you need to have in your backpack and in your gear to be a successful bank fisherman when it comes to catching steelhead, and that's coming up next. All right, so let's dive in here, guys. What I've done today is I have my backpack that I use on a daily basis for steelhead fishing. Whether I'm on the bank or whether I'm throwing this in the raft, this is usually what I carry. So I'm gonna show you guys everything that I kind of bring to make sure that whatever system I'm in or whatever scenario I'm in, I have it covered and I know I can be successful on the river. I tend to probably have too much stuff. I'm a little over packer, so I like to be really, really prepared. So keep that in mind when I'm showing you all this stuff. But the moral of the story here is, is the more you have, the better you're gonna be prepared for any scenario you run into on the river. So let's start with my little side pocket here. I got some of these steely yarnies. One of our good buddies, Jacob Tooley, makes these. This is what's called a puff. So I'll use these when I'm bobber dogging or if I decide to do some drift fishing at all in certain big runs, I'll make sure that I have those. And I'm just gonna rig those up with a, like a size two addicted bead hook or something like that. Next, I got my little addicted eggs. So these are very similar to the Jensen egg that was made way back in the day, but different. They're our version of it. So these come non-scented. The reason these come non-scented, a lot of rivers, especially in the Pacific Northwest, have gone to no scent, no bait. And so we give you the option to be able to use these and not get a ticket. But also, if you want, you can just unscrew the jar here. Oh, need to work on my muscles there, addicts. You can unscrew the jar here. You can take addicted pro cure. You can take any sort of scent, addicted salmon blend, our winter chrome blend, squirt it down into the jar. And these beads are gonna do a really good job of absorbing the scent. So these come in a little strand like this. And basically you can just take one off at a time and you can fish those either as a single little six mil bead or you can fish it tipped with your jig. Always keep a couple different jars of these. We got the red haze here and then we got the nail polish pink just to have a couple different options. Oh, I almost forgot. You gotta start with a good backpack, guys. So this is our addicted 25 liter backpack manufactured in partnership with Mustad. We spent a long, long time on this backpack, guys. I made an immense amount of changes. It's fully waterproof. It has the three quarter zipper. So it goes all the way down here and allows you to be able to get into your backpack a lot easier. It comes with the T-zip zipper, really high quality, nice zipper that you're gonna see on a lot of high-end waders or any big, really any waterproof bag. But as you can see, when I open this thing up, it gives me a lot of room to be able to get into the backpack. And that's what I've seen the biggest issue with a lot of these backpacks that a lot of other companies make with zippers is a lot of times they'll only zip to right here, like halfway down the bag. And then what ends up happening is it's really hard to get into your backpack. So we got tool holders everywhere, stuff to put stuff in the pockets, little clips everywhere to hang stuff off. You got shoulder straps, you got waist strap. We got a little water bladder pouch on the bottom. You can unzip this, you can throw a water bladder in here. And then there's a hole that comes out right there on the end for your hose to come out. And as you can see on the strap, your hose then connects to right here. Again, when we made this backpack, guys, we tried to think of every single thing imaginable that a steelhead angler would want while keeping it with really good construction as well as keeping it waterproof. Nice padded back, as you can see, so it's really comfortable on your back when you're walking around. Got the handle here. We got the front little Velcro zip, Velcro patch you can put your jigs on. T-zip pocket right here, guys, with the clear thing if you wanna put your phone in there, maybe your fishing license, throw whatever in there. Inside the bag, guys, we have a ton of different like pockets, zipper pockets, Velcro pockets. I'll show more of that as I kind of start to dive into the bag, but step one, make sure you have a good, nice waterproof backpack when you're on the bank fishing. You don't have to get our addicted one. Obviously I'm biased because we made it, we designed it, but there's a million companies out there that make really good waterproof backpacks. Just do your research, explore all of them, Find the one that you think's the best. Okay, let's start diving in. So, first things first, everyone out there knows Marlin hates beads. The main reason I don't like beads, guys, is because I just feel like you lose a lot of fish on beads. You hook way more fish. Don't get me wrong, there's no question, there's no doubt in my mind, but the hook to land ratio sometimes really sucks. But regardless, you gotta have them and you gotta be prepared. So, I got a little Ziploc here. This is a trick Jordan taught me. A lot of times when I have my pre-tied leaders, I'll put them in Ziploc bags. So I got a nice pre-tied leaderboard here with some soft beads. 
These are DRO, custom addicted soft beads. You can get these on our website right now if you guys want, but they're really nice. Randy Bonner, the, the author of the Bead Bible, he's the one that designed, tied, and made those for us. And then I got some pre-tied yarnies. Again, bobber dogging, drift fishing, anything like that, I'll use yarnies. And then I just got a couple extra floats in there. But again, nice thing about these Ziplocs is you can throw these, these leaders in here and they don't tangle and mess everything up. So, pretty convenient. Okay, next. I got my spinner box. Just an insane selection of spinners, guys. We got torpedo bodies. We got heavy bodies. We got some Blue Fox style spinners here with the bell bodies. We got spinners with hoochies on them. Again, the idea is here is just to be fully prepared with everything that you may need on the river. I got an array of colors, anything that I may, if Jordan starts smashing them on a blue and silver spinner, I got it in my box and I know I can put it on. Okay, let's see what's next in the bag of goodies. Okay, this is kind of just a smorgasbord box. So this is just a lot of different gear. Shout out to the Sluts Anglers Association. Those guys do amazing work in Southern Oregon to keep our fisheries open. So shout out to those guys. We got a nice little good box here. I got some inline weights for float fishing. I got a good little selection of sinket jigs in different colors. I got some of our addicted worm head jigs. I got some of our addicted soft bead collabs with DRO. I got a bunch of addicted bead hooks here. Some little accessory packs with extra weights and stuff for our fixed floats. Just a nice kind of little hardware box with a whole bunch of different stuff in there to keep you prepared on the river. Next, another little smorgasbord box. We got some one-aught hooks. I don't know what I use those for, but I got them in there just in case. A bunch of extra surgical tube for our addicted fixed floats. I got a few addicted fixed floats in there. A bunch of extra weights. I got some split shots. I got some little mini beads in there for floats. I got a couple just random floats that I may use on different rivers. Like if I'm fishing really small creeks, I may go to a very fixed, small presentation. So again, just making sure that you have a good selection of floats in all variations and all sizes. Tons of extra hardware, tons of extra hooks, tons of extra surgical tubing, just everything that you may need to be prepared. Next box, another just big selection of beads, guys. So a lot of these are incognito beads from Lured. Ton of different colors, tons of different variations. This is one of my favorite, the Cameron Black bead. I got some extra bobber stops in here, guys. I got some of the Mad River Soft beads. Some Dave's Tangle Free from when I'm bobber dogging or float fishing. What else do we got in here? What else do we got in here? Just some more extra bobber stops. I got some T-stops here from b and If I wanna use those for my soft beads. Again, as you guys can see, I just come to the river very, very prepared with everything that I may need. The funny thing is, is a lot of times I find myself using kind of the same things over and over again. But with that being said, it doesn't matter. I wanna make sure that I'm prepared and that I'm really, really just have every little piece of gear that I need. Got my spoon box here. Just an array of different spoons. I got little Cleos in here. I got BC Steels in here. A nice just selection of all different colors, sizes of any sort of spoons that you may need when you're out there fishing. And then I also have a good little selection of the 2 aught open Siwash hook from Mustad. You guys, you can get these on our website and I will stand by and I will say this is the best Siwash hook on the market for pinning fish, for keeping fish hooked. They make them in one aught, two aught, three aught, four aught. An amazing open eye Siwash hook. If you're having trouble not landing fish on spinners or not landing fish on be on spoons, I highly recommend trying this hook. Uh, the other thing I got in here so I can rig my spoons, I have some extra split rings in there. As you can see when I'm fishing a spoon, we got a two fifths ounce little Clio right here. So it's just a blank spoon, but you're gonna put split rings on either end, just like I have right there. So I'll make sure that I keep extra split rings. What else do we got in the bag of goodies? You know that this bag would not be complete without some worms. So we got a good little selection of worms here. We got some sloppy smiths right here with the blue tail, a couple bags of those. We got the old school guys, very first launch of the addicted worms the old OG red pearls. We got some of the nightmare ones from Mad River. We got some of the ghost pink, some of the chrome candies with the white tail. And then we got the red fever, my all time favorite. Blackhead on that thing absolutely dominates. Again, as you can see, just a nice array of colors. I got some peaches, I got some orange, I got some reds and some pinks. Very, very important guys. What else do I got in here? 
Got some extra barrel swivels. Again, when I'm rigging spinners or when I'm rigging spoons, a lot of different things you're gonna use those for. So as you guys can see, these are those zipper pockets I was talking about. So nice zippers in here, Velcro in here, a couple little spots that you can throw gear and put extra stuff. And let's see what I got. I got some extra floats. So that's a 3 8 ounce extra arrow float that I got in there. And then on this side, again, extra floats. You never have too many floats in the bag, guys. So on the bottom of the bag, I got my leader. I have some 12 pound tough line fluorocarbon, and then I have some 15 pound tough line fluorocarbon. Very, very important to have some nice, you know, you're gonna want 12, 15, 10, and you should have some of our line keepers. I'm an idiot, I don't have them on these leaders in here. So you can get our line keepers on our website and this will prevent this from happening, what's happening to my leaders. I need to make sure I get some. But again, making sure that you have a good selection of different leader sizes, very, very important when you're out here on the bank. You never wanna get somewhere, you know, say you get somewhere and you hike in and you're two miles in. You never wanna get two miles in and then not have the gear that you need. So again, that's why I have so much stuff in this bag. What else is in here? Some more little soft, really small eggs here. I don't even know what these are. I think these are when I was in fishing Steelhead Alley, guys, when I was out in the, in the Midwest fishing. I got some of these little mini eight mils. Those need to come out of there and go in my bead box. Need to go in the bead box. I almost forgot. One thing that I do always carry, is always got a good little selection of split shot. So this is something I got from Fish USA when I was out there. It's these brown split shots, but I always make sure I have a good selection of split shot when I'm bead fishing or I need to add to my jigs or anything like that. And I just store this right here in the front of my backpack. So almost forgot, you gotta make sure you got split shot guys. I think that's it guys, that's it, that's all I got. Now, I wanna hear from you guys. What am I missing? What do I not have in my bag that I need to be equipped with that you guys saw that I'm missing? We're not done yet. I'm gonna show you guys what I do as far as what I carry for my rods, what I have for my net, all those other things, so that's coming up next. All right, so now that we talked about your backpack when you're bank angling, let's talk about your rods. So one of the things I always like to tell people is carry as many rods as you can humanly feel comfortable with. Normally, I, it's three for me. I've seen guys carry four rods, I've seen guys carry five rods, I've seen guys carry one rod. Whatever you can afford, whatever you can handle walking around with, bring that many rods. Because ideally, you don't want to be sitting there wasting time tying and retying and redoing things throughout the day. So what I typically have is a couple float rods. My first one here is an X-Series rod. This is a 9102M. This is probably my favorite float rod on the market. This is made by Akuma, obviously one of our amazing sponsors, but even if Akuma wasn't a sponsor, I would still love this rod more than any other rod I've ever fished. It's balanced correctly, it's extremely light, it's extremely durable, it has a lifetime warranty. Little on the spendy side, but one of the most amazing rods on the market in my opinion. Shout out to Josh Cooper for designing and creating what I think is one of the best float rods that there is. So I got one float rod with a worm. Let's grab the other one here. This one's still frozen. It's really cold this morning, guys, about 24 degrees. Um, haven't even fished this jig really yet this morning because we've been filming, so I haven't had an opportunity to. But your next rod, again, that you're gonna usually carry is another float rod. This is a Guide Select Pro. Another really, really good rod, but just a little bit more affordable. This is the 9.9, so this is the 9.92 ML. This is the one you're gonna see Cameron, Jordan, a lot of those guys using 99 times out of 10 because this is the workhorse. This is the rod that you can beat up Usually is pretty durable, usually is gonna last, still has a limited lifetime warranty. When you're on the bank, you have to have something that's at least nine and a half foot. Usually 10 and a half foot's gonna be better, 10 to 10 and a half. Because when you're on the bank, you know, a lot of times you're gonna have to fish, you know, way far away from you. So you're gonna need to have a lot of rod to be able to control your float, mend your line. So it's really important to have a longer float rod, especially when you're bank fishing. So two float rods, if you can, that's the theme. Try to have two, float rods with you. And then the third rod that I'm gonna carry is usually gonna be a hardware rod. It's gonna be a bait caster. This is, again is an Okuma X-Series. What's this model number? This is the 992. So this is an eight to 15, nine, nine foot rod. Very good sensitivity. I can feel my spoon wobbling. I can feel every rock that it hits. Again, as I said with the float rod, the X-Series rods are hard to beat in the Okuma line if you're looking for something high quality. I put an Okuma Helios reel on there, but again, you guys don't have to use Okuma. Just the idea is get something that's a little bit longer in that nine to 10 foot range bait caster. And this is what you can fish your spoons, your spinners, or you can even drift fish with it. So 
that's typically my lineup. That's typically what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be carrying three rods, my backpack, and then in my other hand, I'm always gonna have some sort of net. So this is our addicted landing net. One solid theme that we wanna talk about with these nets, these are not easy to use. This is not the net that you get because it's easy to use. This is the net you get because it's very, very good for the steelhead. It protects them. Once they get cradled inside this and the net wraps around them, they tend to not flop around or get all crazy. Also, gives you an opportunity to get good pictures, get good measurements because we have a measuring tape on the net. Always, always have a net with you, especially if you're fishing a river that's a wild steelhead river where there's not a lot of hatchery fish. You don't wanna be dragging those things up onto the bank or any of that type of stuff. You wanna to try to get them in the net. So one other thing on the rods, guys, I like a 3000 series reel, especially when I'm bank fishing. You're hiking around a lot. You wanna have something light. You don't want big, heavy, bulky rods and reels. So I like a 3000 Okuma ITX. It's a six to one retrieve. Very, very good, high quality reel. But again, as I said, with the other rods and with the reels, buy whatever you like, buy whatever you're comfortable with, go to the store, try things out, use what you like. You don't have to use this, but I will stand by Okuma and I will tell you that we love them, whether they're our sponsor or not. So let's head to the river and do some fishing. All right, everyone, so now we've hit the river and I'm not gonna touch a lot on techniques because we have so many videos online where we talk about in-depth float fishing, in-depth spoon fishing, a lot of that type of stuff. I'll drop some links in the description below so you guys can go get some more education on that stuff. But one thing I do wanna talk about, especially as it pertains to bank fishing, there's one theme that you wanna stick by, guys. If the water is high and moving, you don't need to move around the river as much. What you can do is you can get to a central area where you know the fish are gonna be funneling through and you can just kind of sit there and let those fish come to you. So if you're fishing a river where there's hatchery fish, stay on that section, just fish right below the hatchery and just let those fish come to you. But if the river is low, if the river's low, the river's clear and you know the fish are not gonna be like ripping up and down the river a lot, move. I promise you the most critical mistake bank anglers make is they stay in one spot for too long. I will not fish a run for more than 20 cast. I'll run my worm, I'll run my jig, I'll run my spoon. If I got nothing, I'm on to the next hole. Just bounce, 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 bounce. That's how I've been able to become a really successful bank angler is just making sure you're moving and you're hunting these fish. You are hunting, you are looking for them. You are not letting them come to you. Very, very important, especially in medium to low water. Now again, when the water's super high, not necessary at all. You can just sit in a spot where you know the fish are gonna be funneling through and let them come to you. So let's get a couple casts in here. All right, everyone, so I made a few casts with the worm and now I'm gonna run a spoon through there. Again, like I said, I'm gonna just run two or three presentations through the hole and then I'm gonna move. Okay, everyone, so the good news is, is we have actually some people that fish over in the Midwest. These guys fish the Erie Tribs, some of the Michigan Tribs, just all over on that side. And I thought, what a good opportunity to have Nolan from Fish USA, one of our amazing sponsors, show what's in your back. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure it's gonna be totally different than what's in my back. A little bit. Probably some same stuff, but let's see what you got in your bag, just so people can also be prepared to maybe steal some of your ideas. Yeah, absolutely. It's similar, but different. My box is kind of a mess right now, just cause, uh, Everything was thrown in here and then thrown on the plane to come over. But um, yeah, so one thing that's a little bit different that I brought is a fixed float that works with this float tubing. So if you guys saw the Steelhead Alley movie, you see we use a lot of floats like this back home. And there's a lot of water uh, out here in the PNW that would work great for a float like this. So I figured it wouldn't hurt just to bring one. Um, also got some of our favorite spinners from back home. Blue Fox Vibraxes, they are absolutely killer. One of my favorites, just, you know, bell body spinner. We typically use a little bit smaller ones back home. These are more like the sizes we use for king salmon or in bigger rivers and obviously got to put the single side wash hooks on them, but definitely want to give a few of those a shot while we're here. Another thing to point out, I brought my bead box, which looks quite a bit different than the bead box of a Pacific Northwest fisherman. Um, I mean, typically we're not really using anything bigger than a 10 mil back home. When the water's a little low and clear out here, 
my 10 mil could definitely work. So wanted to bring some of that. Also hard beads, uh, you know, one thing notice out here is like, you see way more soft beads out here than you do hard beads. Back home, it's kind of the exact opposite. You see way more hard beads than you do soft beads. One other thing I should definitely mention, brought the old split shot box. We got a lot of stuff. I mean, you never see anything that small out here on the PNW. It feels like little tiny BB shot, but something we use a ton back home. But we've also got the bigger sizes, SSGs and double A's, stuff like that, but a good variety of split shots. Anything from the big stuff that you see a lot out here to the little tiny stuff that we love to use back home. And then next, you can't come fishing with the Addicted Fishing Crew without bringing snacks. So we got a pretty smashed up peanut butter jelly sandwich. Might look gross now, but uh, around two o'clock when you haven't eaten anything since 8 a.m., tastes pretty good. Red Bull, whenever you need a caffeine boost, you know, it's like, oh, you're not as into your drifts anymore. I'm gonna take a little shot of Red Bull, get right back into it. Got frozen pizza from last night, also crushed in the bottom of the bag, but again, one of those things that comes in handy when you're starving on the river, a beanie. Beautiful here today, but uh, you know, it was cold this morning. It was like 27 degrees or something. So always want to have one just in case. We're definitely used to cold mornings back home. What else do we have in here? Something that you can't hit the river without. A little pro here, addicted steelhead blend. Something that works great back home. Great here too. That's about it. Kept it pretty basic. Oh, one more thing. Leader, lots and lots of leader, 12. 15, 17, 20, a little bit of everything because you never know what you're going to face. So you want to bring a good variety of leader or tippet, rod wraps. Also can't leave home without them. One of those things that might come in handy when you least expect it. And that's it. We traveled pretty light out here. Um, I think, you know, coming to a new place like this, it's pretty important to keep it simple. You know, anytime I, I go somewhere new and I try to just overcomplicate it, it always ends up just being worse than if I just I'm gonna fish a bead or I'm gonna fish a worm, something I know works really well. So yeah, that's about it. Keeping it light and simple out here on the river. Good. Well, there you have it, everyone. Hopefully that helps you fish. Fish, fish, he's got one. He's got one, guys. Just keep pressure on him and start walking him down. Is he big? Well, guys, I was trying to film an outro. No one ruined it. I rudely interrupted. I don't know. We might with a juicy right bobber down. Might be able to get him right here. He's kind of not wanting to go down there. So he's got to. What I would do is turn your rod this way. Okay. Because then you'll pull him this way. See yep. what I'm saying? There yep. you go. Get him out of that current. That is a nice fish. It's a really nice fish, dude. Hey, Marlon. He was exactly where you said he'd be. Told you. <laughs> I would jump down with him. A decent one. Yeah, it is. Oh, baby. I'm getting the shakes. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Big old hen. Let's go. That is a big hen. Really nice hen, dude. Oh! It's a big hen, dude. How big do you think that is? I don't know. That's a good hen. <laughs> That's a good hen. As I said, it was literally exactly to the T where Marlon said it would be. Miss America doing work. Is it a buck? That's a buck. Yeah, cool. Well, addicts, thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate you so much. As I said, hopefully this little tutorial will help you guys get out on the water and know exactly what you need to be successful, just like Nolan was right here on the bank. We appreciate you guys so much for watching. We wouldn't be able to do this. We wouldn't be able to live our dreams if it wasn't for you guys. And I have some exciting, crazy news to announce on a very, very future video. Something I've been chasing for 12 years finally happened, and I can't wait to tell you guys. So stay tuned for future videos. I'm gonna be sneak peeking it out. But let's get some B-roll of this fish, let him go, and we'll see you guys on the river. 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 36 inches. Dude, let's go. 36 inch buck. TV on the first day. <laughs> oh, oh he's, he's ready. ready. He is ready. He is ready. Nice and recovered from the landing net. See you, big boy. He's gone.